everyone. I'm Sandy and this is my channel Stitching with Sandy. Today is Monday, January 29th, 2024 and I'm coming back to you on Floss Tube 51 to share my love for cross stitch and um, to share what I've been up to. So I hope you'll sit back and enjoy if you're stitching. Um, I hope that this gives you comfort while you're stitching and um, if you're new to my channel thanks for stopping by and giving my channel a chance and maybe if you like what you see you can click the like button and subscribe and then see what I'm up to in the future. All right, so since I last saw you last time, there has not been a lot of life updates. Uh, mostly I've just been working. I've had some trainings at school that I've been working on. I'm, on. I'm in charge of curriculum team for my kindergarten team members. And so we've just been working on what we're gonna be pushing towards for the rest of the school year. And I have to say that I teach kindergarten if you don't know. And my kindergartners this year are so amazing. Usually by this time, I have about three fourths of my class learning how to blend CVC words like the word box. And then a fourth of them might be able to read a full sentence. But this year, my whole class can do all of reading CVC words. And not only are they reading short text, but they're also writing full complete sentences. So my class is really rocking it this year and I'm super proud of them. Um, tomorrow will be our 100th day of school and so we're gonna celebrate all the learning we've done so far and um, hopefully motivate them for the rest of the school year for some more new learning. Um, other than that, that's all I've really been up to. Um, I don't have a lot of FFOs today, but I do have one to share with you. And um, I joined the Pine Mountain Designs Bitty Bowl Club this year. I was really disappointed that I didn't join their um, Life is a Bowl last year. Um, I had been a member of theirs before and I did the typography um, club and I loved it. It comes with everything you need to um, put it together. The only thing that you need is floss. It comes with the fabric and all the finishing and the pattern. Just floss is all you need. And usually it's just DMC. So it's a very inexpensive um, purchase to get going. So last year they did Life is a Bull and I the year after the typography, I'm sorry, let me go back. The year after typography was up on a hill and I didn't really care for the first one they showed. So I decided not to join the um, club that year and I really watching all year long I really think I only liked maybe three of those designs so I was kind of pleased that I didn't join the club because it's frustrating if you join a club and you don't know what you're gonna get and then you get a lot of things that you probably wouldn't do yourself so then they become gifts for someone else um, so I'm glad I didn't join but then because I didn't join up oh, there's my daughter's cat Patrick he just loves to come and intimidate me uh, look at he's like oh I'm so cute um, anyhow when um, the next year came I didn't get notified because for some reason I must have dropped off their newsletter and I didn't get notified in the new club and then when people started sharing them I went on to subscribe because I thought oh that looks so cool and then they did not have um, any more room in their club. So now you can get the patterns by PDF, but you don't get all the cute little things inside. So I was a little disappointed, but this year I made sure to make sure I was still subscribed to the newsletter or re-signed up, which I did. And um, when they announced the Biddy Bowls, I was right on ordering right away. So my first kit came last week and I had finished up Bringo, which I'll share with you in, the, in a little bit. But um, I got out the kit this weekend and worked on it and I completed it. So let me share it with you. Um, here it is. It starts in February. Um, you get the kit and it looks like this, only it has all the little things to make this display. And so over the weekend, I worked on it. So I started stitching this one on Thursday. Let me show you the whole piece. Um, I'm trying not to drop it. So you get two stitching pieces. Oops, I dropped some of it. You get the bowl and you use the bowl every month. And then you get all the stuff to decorate the inside of the bowl. And I'll go through that with you. Um, go ahead, Pat. <laughs> he wanted to say hi. All right, and so the first one that you get, this is the one I started on Thursday, is this little piece 
And so I stitched that. I Actually, I stitched two of the heart colors and then I had to rip it all out. That was a bummer. Um, because I was centering it based off the heart, but I should have been centering off the whole piece. And then it comes with the top and the bottom fabric. So here's the top fabric. And it's already on there, it's flat. You stitch it up and then they give you the directions to make a squared out bottom bag. So it's actually a fabric bag. And then they give you the little greenery. They give you the ribbon to tie on. They give you this cute little key charm to go with the little pillow or with the little heart. Oh, I don't think I'm showing you that that well. There it is. And, um, and then all the directions of how to put it together. Um, so here's one. I was very excited about this. I worked on it yesterday, actually FFOing it during my um, Sunday Zoom. If you're not familiar with my Sunday Zoom, I do a Sunday Zoom every second and fourth Sunday of the month. And that's because some months there's five Sundays in the month. So if you want to join, you can email me anytime and I will send you the link. We just had ours. Our next one will be Super Bowl Sunday, so if you're available, you're welcome to join. It's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But on that day, I am going to sign off probably an hour before I would normally because I am going to the Superb Owl that is being hosted by Lindy Stitches, Stephanie, and um, Hands on Design, Kathy Haberman. So I'm gonna be going to that, so I wanna make sure I sign off early so that I can then log in Make sure I get in okay, because I know it's going to be open an hour prior to the start of the um, event. And um, that way you can log in if you have any issues. They can help you before it's time to start. So I will still have my Zoom if you want to join us. And you can come in. We had several people come in this last time. And most of us just sit and chat. We talk about um, stitchy things like... We've talked about natural need work. We talked about sales that people are in. We talked about Bringo, which is a challenge, a stitching challenge, and we have a couple other stitching challenge groups that we talked about. And then we just talk about life, and it's just a lot of fun to have someone to hang out with for the day, um, and then stitch and share something you have in common. So the other piece, oh, it also came with this cute little card, and then it gave you these this sheets of paper from a book that you would cut up and then curl up into the little curly cued um, paper to be in the filler of the bowl. So this goes in there. And then they also gave you this pattern and the directions on, and everything to finish it for this little pillow. So it came with the directions, the stitching fabric, you just needed the floss. It came with the chenille and it came with the backing fabric. And so you get all of that in your kit and I think that's fantastic. So now the next one that comes, I already have the little bowl. So I'll get the pattern and all the things to make for March in the bag. I'll put it all together and then I'll change out this bowl and put in March. So I'm actually ahead of the game because it's still January and I've already got this finished. So I feel really good about that. All right. Next up, that's all my finishes. I only have two. Um, the reason why is because I did Bringo this month um, for the month of January. And if you watched my last channel, you saw the starts of my Bringo. So I'm going to share with you the ones that I've done since then. So I have a little list. They give you a list. This is how it works. They give you a list. This is through the monthly... Um, monthly magazine challenge group and you don't have to stitch all from magazines i guess they originally started that way and then changed their mind after people didn't all work for magazines but for their january challenge it's called bringo like it's called and they give you a list of prompts and then what you do on your planning sheet is you go through your whips or you can have new start and you list out ones that fit the prompt and it's actually two pages worth because it's 25 days and then they stop on the 25th because they want to give you the last few days of the month so that you can play catch up if you are busy working like I am or something comes up where you're not able to work on it each day and the goal is to get at least 100 stitches or one hour of stitching on each project and you can use more you can use one project in more than one prompt I chose not to because I wanted to work on my whips 
And then they give you a bingo board. And what you do is you go through and you number them. So what I did is I put my number in the corner and then I put the date that it was called. And um, you work on it. And as you work on it, you I fill it in with highlighter, but you can exit out. You're trying to get bingos. And then they have a, at the end of the month, um, you turn in a picture of your bingos and if you have blackout and then you get chances to win prizes. Uh, I've never done it before. So um, one of the things that you need to do is you post a picture of your project prior to stitching that 100 stitches and then you post a picture when you've completed it. So they check your bingo board and then they look at your album that you created to make sure that you did indeed follow all of the prompts correctly. So, sorry, draw my paper. So I'm going to go through the ones that I did. I did complete blackout, as you see from my board. It's all yellowed out. It took me until Saturday to complete it. So um, because of work, I need, I was a couple of stitches behind, but Saturday I caught up and I'm really proud of myself because I stuck it out. I remembered to do the posting of the pictures. Um, and now 25 projects that I had that are all whips actually got worked on. And because I, um, I'm very OCD, um, and a hundred stitches to me did not seem to show enough. So I would look at something and say, oh, I want this whole area completed by the time I put this down. And so I think I put in more than a hundred stitches. There was a couple of projects I may have stuck to just a hundred stitches because we got busy and I had to go and do something. But otherwise I did stick to the count. So the first one that I'm going to show you is, um, I've got to look at it because they're all, I want to make sure I say the right prompt. This one is, the prompt is a whip or new start that is a mode of transportation. So I am doing 24 in 24 and I'm doing ornaments this year. So I decided to pull out um, my ornament that I'm stitching for my three sons. I plan to do three for my sons and then one for my grandson because all of them were into, into trains when they were little. So I'm just gonna change the color of the train. So this one is from the Just Cross Stitch Magazine Ornament Edition, 1997. It's a prairie schooler and it's the little train. And the little train is, is um, calls for these like soft colors. I've changed my, my um, it's like a copper. I changed it to a brighter red, but I, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do this one in red and green. I'll do one with light blue and dark blue, one with light green and dark green, and then I'll need to figure out one more. I might do a, another style of red and green, maybe a different shade, so that they're all a little bit different. Yeah, and I'm gonna try something. We'll see on this one if I'm able to do it when I pick it up next time. But here is where I got to. So I got, I finished the tracks and I got all of the green done. So I need to put in the red and there's a little bit more of this gray color, I believe for the wheels. And then there's a little smoke coming out of the chimney. So what I wanna do is, where's my project? What I was thinking would be cool if I could figure it out. Let me get the pattern so I can show you. I, here is the smoke and I'm gonna make my smoke brighter. And I was thinking if I could put my kids' names inside the smoke, that would be really cool. So I'm gonna try it on this one, and if I'm successful, I'll make sure I do it in all of them. And then what I'll probably do is somewhere in here, I will put the year for that child in there too. So it'll have the year and their name on it. And then that way, I don't have to put the year and the name on the back of the ornament. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to work on it. And this one, this is just a um, beautiful beige Ada. I think it's 14 count. Um, when I was putting my ornaments together this year, I wanted to pull a lot of, I have a lot of scraps of fabric and I'm trying to use them up. Um, so I, the, some are linen, some are Lugana, some are Ada, some are Monaco, whatever I have, I want to use it up. I've, I'm very um, careful of using every inch of my fabric so that I can save on buying patterns instead of buying fabric all the time. So there was that one. The next one, this one was stitch a whip or a new star. And this one says that can be tied to classroom studies like 
history, geography, civics, language arts, science, music, gym, etc. So that made me think of summer school. So I am on summer school lesson two by Brenda Gervais. This is what it looks like. And when I got this one out the last time, I'm stitching it one over one on 25 count. I love this one over one. It's so sweet and cute. And it's very easy to stitch one over one on 28 or 25 count, I think. So I'm doing it, this is 25 count. Whoops, I have a loose needle. And when I started working on this, I only had the border. So now I'm going and doing the lady's dress. I did her feet and I'm coming up her dress. I'm ready to do the strawberry that she's holding right there and then I'll be able to do the top of her so she's almost done. And then I can start on her little partner. Um, I really enjoy this one. It takes a little bit longer and I don't work on it every day. I think if I did, I'd be done in within a day or two, but I'm enjoying the process of taking my time on it. So it'll get done when it gets done. All right, next up, this one. What did I use this prompt for? Let's see. I wish these were in order. I know that they're not because they jump around because of course they pull numbers and so it's not in the exact order. This takes me a minute to locate the prompt. All right, this one is called a whip or new start from your favorite designer. And I know a lot of people are having trouble choosing. I have several favorite designers and one of them is Teresa Kogut. And so when I went to StitchCon, this was my StitchCon piece. My plan for it is that here I am, this is me, is it, aren't I cute? <laughs> and then instead of putting TK for Teresa Kogut, I am going to put StitchCon and 2022 underneath it to represent the, the year that I went. And so when I picked this one up, I just had these two little floss bobbins, the floss, and then I think probably this much of her dress. So I went ahead and went across and added her feet. And I'm just saying that this skirt was a beast and that's only the bottom of the, the skirt. It's only this, which looks so minute here in the picture. So I've got a long ways to go, but I do like it. It's very pretty. Um, I had a good time stitching on it. And so I'm working on that one. Yeah. I got a lot done. I, my goal was to get that bottom of the skirt done. I try to do sections of pieces so that way when I come back, I can move on to the next section. So this next one is Let's see, oh, whip or new start inspired by your pet or someone else's pet. So as you saw, I have I have a cat, actually I have three. And that one was my daughter's. And that was so fitting because this piece I'm stitching for my daughter. So this piece is Meow Block by Hands on Design. And what, what my daughter and I discussed about this piece was, I'm stitching it for her. The face is on the top. I'm gonna do one like this. That was her cap that was just here. I have a um, gray tabby that looks similar to the orange tabby. He, this will be him. And this one, instead of the white face, it will be solid black because I have a black Maine Coon. And so then we're gonna represent them inside the side blocks too. So here's the side blocks. And here's where I'm at. And I've already stitched the, all the way over here. So I went ahead and did this black and white tuxedo kitty. There's the gray tabby and there's the orange tabbies. But over here, there's like a little basket with a big fat cat in it. And it's done just like this tuxedo. That's the one that I'm gonna make my Maine Coon. Cause she's huge. And so it'll be perfect to make her in that spot. And then what we've decided is on the bottom of it, cause there's no, there's no design for the bottom. Um, I'm going to put a paw print for each of the three cats and then their names next to it. And then I'll put the year on it. And then that way my daughter can commemorate all three of our cats from that year. And then she'll always have it as a special gift from me to her. And then the next one, 
I worked on is, let's switch back to the beginning. Um, whip or new start that reminds you of where you live. So I picked up this one. This one is the Sunnyside Sampler. I'm sure you've seen it before, but it's by the John Thread. This is what it looks like. I know there was a lot of people that went to Stitch West that had stitched this not um, in time to be done by last year's uh, retreat, and then they picked a new one for this year. Um, I joined on on stitching along with that one. I know Colette from SoCal Stitchers. She goes to our SoCal Stitchers retreat. So once a year I get to see and chat with her. So um, when I heard she was doing it, I was like, oh, I wanna join, so I did. So here is my piece and where I was, was I had completed this gray house the last time in the sunshine and the fence and the little bird. So this time I put in the apple tree and I put in the next house. And behind this house are some tall sunflowers, which I'm really excited about stitching. And then I'll continue on with the letters as well. So this one's taking a little bit longer than I'd like, but it's really fun to stitch. Um, and it's fun, 100 stitches wouldn't have gotten me very far, but I tried to say, okay, every time I pick it up, let's do a house. So that way we can make some progress on it. And eventually I'll finish it. All right, next up, this one. The next one is, um, let's see. Sorry for the moment of silence. I'm trying to find it. Oh, whip or new start that will be finished in any way except being framed. So, I picked a hands-on design block. Um, I've never done one of these block finishes, so when I go to finish my daughter's and this one, I sh I'm hoping that that'll mean I'm an expert um, because I have, I've purchased many of them. I really like the looks of them and I want to do them all. And it's just so funny that I happen, happen to have two going at the same time. Now this one I started in one year, my friend um, Barbara and I did a March Madness and we started 12 new designs and one, one quarter of my starts were St. Patrick's Day. And I finished all my St. Patrick's Days from then, and it's been two years now, except for this one. So th when I started, I just had this shamrock and this shamrock. When, so when I came back to it, I had the purple flower that I put in, this little shamrock down here, another purple flower, another shamrock, and then this is like a darker green. And I started the words, and then I did the little smyrnas at the top. I really like this one, and I think it'll go pretty quick because when I sat down, I think it only took me maybe an hour that I stitched on it, and I got all that done. So I felt very comfortable that I'll be able to get pretty far on it. Um, it's nice because even though they look like they're all the same design, they're all laid out a little bit different as you go through it. So it's not really the same stitching the whole way through. All right, now this one, this one is stitch a whip or new start that intimidates you. Now this one, and now that I'm doing it, I'm so glad that I'm doing it. Um, this one, there was a kit that my friend Melissa found at one at a retreat that was a full complete kit. And she knew that I wanted to try different um, stitchy finishes uh, that like a typical stitcher should or have completed throughout their stitching time frame in their life. And um, one of them was a needle book. And so when she saw this kit, she had known that I wanted to do a needle book, I wanted to do a biscornu, I wanted to do some a pin pillow, and and so she picked it up because look, it has all of them. So it has the needle roll, it has a flat fold, it has a little pin pillow, and then over here is the biscornu, and it's called Tiny Acorns by the Sweetheart Tree, and so the kit came with everything: the fabric, the floss, the beads, everything, and this is fully beaded, if you can see. And it has a lot of specialty stitches, which is why I put it down as 
um, can be intimidating because some of the stitches I've never done before. And I've been stitching for 30 years and model stitching for at least 25 years. And so I've done a lot of different um, stitches, but some of them I haven't done in a very long time and some, I, some I've never done. So at first I was a little scared, but as you're going through it, I feel like you look at the diagram, you figure it out, and then you're able to do it. And you're like, well, that wasn't really as hard as I thought it would be. So here it is, it's on the linen. And I when I picked it up, I just had the center motif. So then I went ahead and did the black work to complete the, the diamond. And then each row is some specialty stitches all along here. Now there is all of this area that looks blank, that's all has beading. And I don't wanna put those in to the very end because I wanna be able to move my um, Q-snap as I go along. And so you'll stitch like one of the specialty stitches across the top and then you'll do the same stitch at the bottom. And so I don't really, I've been working on it and now I don't really have that much further to go. I just have this row where the um, acorns are and then there's a specialty stitch right there. And then the only thing left is I have to pull some, pull some threads at the top and the bottom to make uh, space for the ribbon to go through. I'm a little nervous about that. Um, and then that's it, then it's done and I can put it together. So I think it's gonna make the cutest little needle roll. It's not very big, you know, um, when it gets done, it looks a lot bigger on there. But um, I'm really impressed. I Like I said, it was something that intimidates me. I pulled it out for the prompt and now I'm so grateful that I did because I'm gonna get it done and I'm gonna be able to say that I was able to do it all by myself. Sorry, I keep dropping my, my prompt. So I'm very excited about this one. And I, I don't know if I'll do the other ones like right away. I might put the pattern and back into my stash and do some later could be because I have completed, since then I have completed some Biscornus, several of them. I've completed many, many flat folds and um, many pin cushions. So, so I'll just put it in there and I'll pull it out. I like that one for um, November displays. All right, the next one, this prompt was whip or new start with a bird. And I'm gonna show you this bag is made by my friend Michelle. She makes beautiful bags and she gifted this with, along with my entire stitchy group for my 50th birthday. Look at the inside. And they know that I love sunflowers. So this was made with lots of love and I appreciate it. And then they also knew that I wanted, I wanted a crow pattern from the Good Housewife, um, Ida Ray and Ida Mae, and they went to hunt for them, but you know they're out of, out of print. And so it's very hard to find. And then if you do find it, it's astronomically expensive. And I would never want anyone to spend that much. If I won't do it myself, I wouldn't expect anyone else to do it. So since they couldn't find that, they kept searching. And from the Good Housewife, they found the three crows. And so they got this and they kitted it up for me with MPI silks, what's called for, which was a treat because I had never stitched with MPI silks. And so the last time I stitched on it, I had one crow done. So I thought, well, every time I get it out, I'll stitch a crow. And as I go along, I'll just keep stitching the, the um, border and the alphabet. And by the time I get to the third crow, I'll be finished. So actually, it's this is only two sittings of stitching. And I've already gotten this much done. So you can see I just have one more crow to do over here and the rest of the alphabet. And then there's like two more triangles. So it's almost finished. And it's it goes really fast. Like I think if I was just to focus on this, this would be a very fast stitch. And I'm really enjoying it so much. And what a great gift um, for my friends. All right, next up. Cause see, I've done a lot of stitching. No finishing, but a lot of stitching. All right, this one is called Whip or New Start from a non-USA designer. 
that was hard because I didn't really have very many out of the country's designers, but this one's from Italy and it is by, it's called Spring 2018 by Sarah. And it's a big, big piece. And it really doesn't help that I made it on 28 count, so it's gonna be ginormous. But I'll show you where I'm at. I think her design is so pretty. Um, and I think being in like um, on a wall that needs a nice big piece, this will be beautiful on it when I get done. So here's where I am. Here's half the, half the fabric. So you can see it's gonna be quite large, but I, when I picked it up, the last time I stitched on it, I had the bunny and the sun, the birds, and this big design here at the bottom. So this time when I took it out, I started to go across the border and I stitched this little flower block. And I think it's so cute. Um, so the next time I pick it up, I'll move. I've done one of these, so I'll go back down and do a house motif on the next time I pull it out. Um, this one may take me a long time, but I just know it's gonna be gorgeous when it's done. So it's worth the wait. She does use a lot of floss colors in her designs look, all of those. It's a lot, but I'm using DMC, so that's not so bad. It's not a costly, expensive project, just a lot of colors. All right, so that, I believe, shows you all of my Bringo. Pretty sure, yes, all my Bringo start, all my Bringo pieces. Um, if you didn't see my last floss tube and you wanna see what other ones I did, you can watch number 50 to see that. But I finished, I don't know, I don't know if I will, I'll win anything. I hardly ever win anything. But I do wanna recommend that this is a fun challenge to do because they give you the option of counting your stitches or doing it by time. And so for me, sitting down for an hour is a piece of cake, just put down that I did an hour's worth. Um, I don't like to count stitches, not something that I wanna do. I'd rather be stitching than counting. Um, so, it's a fun one and it really got me to get my whips out and work on them. And really that's what I want to do because I wouldn't have started these pieces if I didn't love them. So now the goal is to get them complete and still be able to stitch other things along the way. So that brings me to, I'm going to check my notes, make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh no, I did forget one. I see it sitting here. It was supposed to be the first one I showed you. I forgot. It was a whip or new start that has to do with music. So I chose this ornament, Joy to the World by Stitching with the Housewives. I love that little song. And here's my progress on this. Let me move my needle because it's blocking one of the letters. And this is on black, 28 count black Monaco. And I really do like how it looks on it. So here we go. I usually do my black um, stitching on 14 count Ada because it's easy to see, But and I was a little intimidated by this, but if you have a good light and as you're stitching, it actually works really nicely. And then when it's finished, it looks so nice because the holes are not so giant like they are on Ada. So I really like that. I'm looking forward to stitching a bunch of those. So I apologize, I forgot that one. Um, next up, I want to talk about a new start that I did. So a new start, well, I did the Biddy Bowl, the February Biddy Bowl, it was a new start and they were finishes. And then I also am in the Teresa Colgate Patreon and I'm in her tier four. And if you're a part of her tier four, you get to be, she does free sales. So she does, she gives you, she gives you quite a bit, you get, three complete patterns for the month. Um, and you get lives with her where you get to, she'll chat with you about what she's up to or just to chat with you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump you. Um, and she does a sow. Now I've done, I've worked on two of her sows. One is completed. It's hanging up on my wall. The other one's halfway done. And um, this new one, she's doing over a two year period. So it's not too late to join if you're interested. If you're on another tier, you can move up to tier four. And the way it works is she is going to release a pattern on the 15th of each month. 
And then if you don't download it or you join later, you can buy the previous month for a dollar, I believe, something like that. So um, this is the first month and this is the part of it. And she's doing this called Hometown and she's doing it based off of a style of fabric she designed years ago. And when I went to her live, she mentioned that she wanted to stitch it on green. She thought green fabric would be beautiful. And in her fabric that she had, um, the background had a lot of rolling green, rolling hills. And so she thought green would be really great. Well, of course my ears perked up when she said green because that's my favorite color. Well, I kept asking in the, zoo, in the, um, in the live chat with her, what color green was she thinking of? Because she ended up stitching it on um, a fox and rabbit fabric instead, because it's called up in that up in the attic, I believe, because she was working off of fabric she had in stock at her house, and so she didn't have a green that she liked to work for it. So I kept asking in the chat, "What green were you thinking of? What shade of green?" But she didn't answer and it wasn't because she was being rude she's a wonderful person it's just there's so many people in that group and so many people messaging her that even during the um live she was like oh i can't keep up with this chat i can't keep up with the chat so i decided that i would just make my own conversion she did design it to have all dmc colors because there's a lot of floss you need for this pattern but um, she said as she stitches along, she may change to um, a conversion to a, a over dyed instead. So what I did was I went to Grand Country Quilts and they had just finally got linens and things in. So I got this piece of linen. It's called, uh, it's by Live and Die in LA. It Live and Die LA um, are the dyers. And it's called Little, Little, let me see if I have it, the name in here. It is called, where did I put it? Yes, it's called The Child. The Child by Live and Diet LA. And so I, I think that's a Star Wars reference. I'm not really into Star Wars, but it's this green. So then while I, so I love this fabric, it's so beautiful. And so I went ahead and stitched the birds and the tree, but I did do a floss conversion to some cl classic color works. And I did do it even, let me show you. I did do a floss conversion for the house, but here's the only thing that I don't like about this particular one. So I'm gonna wait a month before I do any more. It's really hard and it's probably my OCD, but it's really hard for me to stitch a piece of the house and a piece of this and a piece of this and not do the whole thing I want so badly to just do the whole thing and feel complete. So I've decided to hold off on doing this part because it's cut off and this part until they're revealed and then I'll do it all and then it'll feel more complete for me. Um, but I did change some colors. All of my colors are classic color works so far. I don't know that I'll change every color. I'll keep some DMC on ones that, parts that only have as few stitches. For example, the birds. Let me show you again. The birds I just left in DMC because that's a very small motif. It's not going to make a big difference with whether or not it has um, color changes. So I just did DMC. They're solid. Um, but I did change for the tree because I thought leaves can be different colors and you can see there's different shades of green in it and I just thought that made the leaves look more true to a tree and I did change the um, stem and the, or not stem the trunk and the branches as well so I will be keeping track of my colors but that's where I'm at so far I would have stitched like I said the entire block but I need that whole house done and I don't want to guess on what that rest of the house where it ends or anything because I don't want to rip out so I figured I'll just wait till she releases the next part of it because it'll have that part of the house and then I'll be okay and then I can stitch the whole thing so stay tuned I try I try to stay on top of these cells but you know sometimes life gets in the way but um as every time I work on it I will share it and show you my progress and you can join at any time. It's gonna be a two year sale, so 
Even if you decide, oh, I wanna wait until I see a little bit more, I'll keep showing what I'm doing so that you can see it as it comes out. Um, but it's a lot of fun. All right, so I only have a couple updates left. The I have a swap. If you're not familiar with my swaps, I pick a theme. I ask that you stitch something that's no larger than six by six stitching. You may finish it any way you like. The only um, requirement is that you make sure that it fits into the theme. And then um, you send in your name and address, and then I will be pulling someone for you to mail to. So if you're interested and you do not want to send outside of USA, please make sure you let me know. If you don't mind international, please let me know that as well. My email will be in the description box below. Please make sure that for the swap that you email me, or you can also message me on Instagram. I try to write down who's interested in the addresses right away. Now I will pull names. It'll either be on Thursday or Friday. Thursday is a busy day, so if I can, I will try to pull them Thursday, so that way you get them right away. Um, but it might not be until Tuesday, because I do have, I have a couple of meetings on Thursday, so I'm not sure that I'll be home Thursday, and I'm getting home pretty late Thursday night. So if I have time, I will pull them on Thursday. If I don't, I will pull them on Friday, and I will mail them out, because I try to be as close to the first as possible. And then you have one whole month to stitch the piece for who you're sending it to, and the requirement is that you mail it out on March 1st. So this year's, this, this round's theme is the bunny hop swap. So you need to have a bunny in your piece, and that's the only requirement. Um, so it's not too late to start. If, if you're interested, as long as you message me by Thursday, Thursday. I would say Thursday because Friday, I may pull the names Friday morning before I go to work. So if you're interested, message me by Thursday and let me know that you're interested. And then I will randomly pick who you're sending to. And then I'll send out that email to you. And then you can get started on your stitching. I know some people are already working on their stitching. I haven't started mine yet, um, but I'm looking forward to it. A little hint is if you find that you stitch something for someone else and realize you wish that you stitch it for yourself and then you think, oh, I'll stitch it later and nine times out of 10 you don't. Um, what I do is I stitch, I take the strand, whatever color I'm working on, I'll stitch a strand of that color in one piece of fabric that's already have its Q-snap on it and then I'll go in the same spot on another piece of fabric in a Q-snap and I just go back and forth so that when I'm done, I'm FFOing two complete finishes and then I get to keep one for myself. And um, it's worked out so well and then that way I don't feel like, oh, I really wanted that one because we are very talented stitchers, and I know that we love what we, we stitch, and it's it'll be nice that you can have a matching piece with someone else. So that's what I do. But um, other than that, um, the only other thing is I do have a Zoom, which I talked about earlier. If you're ever interested in that, make sure you notify me, and I will get the link out to you. And if you're going to um, the Superb Owl, please leave a message in the bottom and, and let me know so that I can look for you there. If you're not going and you're curious about it, go to Stephanie's page, Stephanie's website, Lindy Stitches, and she's got the information there. And I believe Kathy Haberman has the same information on her website. It's $39. You get a pattern for each of the ladies that day. There will be a PDF. And um, they're gonna have a lot of fun things. So it's very similar to Jingle Ball, except it's only five hours and then it's over. So you get to do the stitching rooms, you get to speed date, they're gonna have a competition between each other's husbands and how well they know cross stitch and all of our little cross stitch acronyms that we have. And then um, they're gonna have a little class where they're gonna talk about designing, where if you're interested in learning about designing or how to get started or what resources are out there for you to use, they're gonna go into that as well. So you can ask in the chat like questions about it and they can answer it. Um, it sounds like it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. If you just wanna go get the patterns and go in the stitching rooms and chat with other friends, you can do that too. Um, I think it's well worth the money and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now I know a lot of you might be football fans, so um, 
Uh, maybe it doesn't hit during football time. I'm not really sure the time. I'm not a fan, but I do know my husband will be watching. But for me, it falls, I believe, at from two o'clock to seven. So I think, I think um, I'll only be out of it for part of the time. I don't know. Um, mostly, I just come out and they show me commercials or they call me when the halftime shows on. Um, I like to see that. But other than that, I'm really not a fan. Um, I just hope that whatever team my husband wants to win, win, so he can be happy. Uh, other than that, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you um, remember to be courageous, be confident, be creative, and be kind. Um, until next time, have a great couple of weeks, and I'll see you later. Bye.